Let's talk a little bit about finding theme in the story. This is something you're going to hear a lot. Questions asked of you um, as you're doing assignments for us in English 3. You're going to see it if you have um, star test is still complete and, and ongoing in your English career. So you want to make sure you totally understand this. And that's something that gets confused quite a bit. So let's um, clear up some of those misconceptions and figure out how we're going to determine it in stories that you see. So first of all, let's look at the definition. This is the central idea of the story. So not the plot, but it's going to be the lesson that the author wants you to learn after reading the story. So think about what they want you to know, um, what their view is of the world, or what they want you to discover about human nature in general. Theme is not ever going to be expressed in a single word. You'll see sometimes people say the theme of the story is love. Well, it's not. That's a subject. You're going to be looking for more than a, a single word. Um, it is not the purpose of the work, and it is not specific to one character or situation, and it's certainly not the conflict. It's definitely more than all those things. It is the lesson that we want you to learn. So how you're going to go about determining the themes? First of all, you need to understand the main character in the story. Is that person somebody you want to identify with? Is that somebody that you want to become more like or have a characteristic like? Or is it somebody you want to try to be um, different than because they've made terrible choices? Then you're going to identify the conflict in the story. Um, from there, you're going to have to know how that conflict was resolved. And finally, you can put all that together to try to make a generalization or just a, um, a general statement about what lesson can be applied to anybody based upon what that character went through in that conflict. So let's look at an example from a story that hopefully you remember from your childhood, Little Red Riding Hood. So first we're going to look at our main character. Our main character that we're going to identify with right now is um, Red. Um, so what I can remember about her is that first of all, she's super helpful. She wanted to go help her grandma who was sick. She was going to take her some food. Um, so sweet girl, had really good intentions. Um, but then when she gets to her granny's house, she finds her granny in bed. Um, but she thinks granny looks a little funny. Um, just remember, this is her grandmother, and she doesn't quite put it together that this is not her grandma, it's a wolf. And as you can see from this picture, I think it'd be pretty obvious. So that tells us a little bit of something about Red. Maybe she's a little naive. Um, so the conflict here that we want to think about is, first of all, the wolf ate Granny, right? And now the wolf is trying to lure Red in so that he can eat her as well. Um, and unfortunately, the outcome of the story, the conflict resolution, is that Red falls for the wolf's trick and is eaten. So um, when I said earlier, you want to think about, do you want to be like this character or not? I would like to be like Red and be helpful, but I don't want to be like Red in believing that uh, my grandma is a wolf and allowing it to eat me. So how can we make sure that we are not like Red in that situation? So you might um, say that our theme might be, don't always believe everything people say to you. This wolf has sat he sit here and convinced Red that he is Granny. You might also say appearances can be deceiving. Um, so think about that. That's the lesson that we can learn by trying not to follow in Red's footsteps.